shaking four hours drive to come to what appears to be a magnolia walled generic office <laughs> in the <laughs> come on do you know what six and a half hours for me i'm that excited to show you this i came up last night come and check this out your four hour drive is definitely worth the all wait all right all right show me reveal all what do you reckon to that bloody hell still think it's a magnolia office bloody hell it's suddenly got a lot more colorful and a it lot. smells great do you know what for me this is i've been here a few times right this is one of the best bike collections anywhere in the uk and that's why we're here today he's johnny smith i'm shane shaky burn this is episode six of burnout on the late break show proudly supported by ebc breaks this is my new office i've just decided <laughs> When we came in, I was looking down here in awe at the lines of, of bikes. I hadn't actually clocked the fact that there's a book of yours in this little cabinet here and maybe all of your clothes as well. They're not called clothes, John. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily for me, the owner of this collection of bikes is not only a friend of mine now, yeah. but he's also um, a fan, which is, which is super cool. So this is my championship winning bike from 2017. Those are my clothes. Wow. Some of those are my, my helmets. That bike there is my 2018 bike, so the last bike I ever rode. But enough about my bikes for a minute. Let's have a walk around and, and have a look at some of the other stuff. I'm coming along for the ride. So this bike was bought for Joey Dunlop by one of his sponsors. It is an RC30. Yeah. Um, RC30 is such an iconic bike. You see there, the original kind of race bikes. Um, this was the owner's RC30 that he had for the road himself. This one's quite interesting. That's Neil McKenzie's. It used, to, it used to belong to Neil McKenzie, the three-time British Superbike champion. Did he really? Yeah. He tested that against uh, a Desmo Sedici, I believe, once upon a time when he owned it. I love it. So this is, this is Honda line. This is Honda line. Yeah. What do you notice about the difference between these two, though? Headlights. No. Yeah, the headlights are bigger. Yeah. Uh, well... Different cut, different shape mirrors, different shape of indicators. I'm, I'm actually quite impressed. That's because this bike here is a, a Japanese model. So it's a full on Jap bike um, imported into this country, smaller indicators. As JDM you said. spec. JDM spec, smaller mirrors, headlights are different. Yeah. I prefer the original ones actually on the UK bikes. I think they look a bit cooler. I love, I, got, I, I know that you've, you've ridden one of these um, yeah. in fairly recent time. On, a, on one of our videos, but... No, that was this one. Oh, that's the RC45, is yeah. that? Or this that, is a 45, That's yeah. the 45. Yeah. I love the shape of this and I love the coloration. They're of this. still beautiful now. Yeah, they are, aren't they? You and think that bike's from 1988, 1989? How pretty are they? I, I was giggling looking at this. The hand-assembled RC30. We're making them as fast as we can. It's just mega. And they are so good. I've ridden one on track. Uh, years ago, 2018, I think, at Valencia, I got to ride the first time ever on an RC30. What an amazing thing. So, and it still impressed you? Yeah. Handling, oh. unbelievable. Really? Unbelievable. That's why I was so keen to ride this when we'd done Craze Collection, because yeah. I'd never ridden a 45. Um, you know, they were the, this was the next step on, if you like. It yeah. went from that to the SP1 twin after that, the V-twin that Colin Edwards won the World Superbike Championship on. So the RC45 was a weapon a proper weapon if you haven't seen his his car cave or bike cave sorry with this in i'll put a link above our heads now this is quite an interesting thing in 2009 the last ever 250 cc world championship was held um hiroshi ayama won the championship but this is one of the final batch of 10 250 cc two strokes ever made um, really for racing yeah so that's uh, that's quite a unique bike that is one of the last ones i ever did so it's either going to be super special or super crap because they just threw it together, but I would imagine it's super <laughs> special. Um, but yeah, a little weapon that is. It's, oh, honestly, there's, there's some stuff here that's super, super special. I've that, never seen one of these. 
These are the bikes, these two Ducatis are the actual bikes that started the World Superbike Championship. So in 1989 or 1990 or whatever it was when the World Superbike Championship actually started, mm -hmm. if you were on a Ducati, you were on this bike. So Davide Todotzi, who's now the MotoGP team boss, um, actually won one of the first ever World Superbike races on these. And funnily enough, it was this bike against the RC30s. Was it? Um, so yeah, they were they were the two things to be on. But uh, this one, one of these won the first ever race. Not this particular one, but that eight, one, eight, that, eight Desmo Quattro. Yeah, that one has a really cool story. I'll tell you about that one afterwards. Um, okay. I don't know where to go. Check back up it, road bike alley. Come up this way. This okay. is this is um, Ducati's V4 SP. So this is a little bit of a more track focused version of the of the latest Ducati, the V4. Obviously, Ducati's heritage was with the with the V-Twin right up until 2018. 2018, these came out, and this was one of the first sort of special ones they made in like 2019 or 2020. Yeah. Everything about it's kind of track-focused, electronic suspension. They've got carbon fiber wheels. I mean, oh, just yeah. just looks super cool. It, it looks Batman-esque with all the winglets and everything. And the gosh, so Panigale R yep. Final Edition 12.99. The final edition of the V-Twin. Right. So that's a celebration of all things V-Twin. Yeah. Um, that was the bike that was, um, you know, Chaz Davis rode that at Laguna Seca, or he rode his superbike in those colours at Laguna Seca when that model was launched. Because I was there working for Eurosport, and I thought, oh, they've changed the colour. And it was because it was the final edition, Tricolore. They made one in... Um, in 2008 as well, they made a Tricolori bike and they've done a few throughout the, throughout the models. It's like a final send off, if you know what I mean, yeah. a tribute to their Italian heritage. Yeah, incredible looking thing. Word has it, and I don't know if it's true, but you can still actually buy one of them brand new out of the factory, Good. if you know the right people. Do you know the right people, Shaggy? Well, I know the right people, but we're not got the right money. <laughs> <laughs> Difference. This is the creme de la creme at the moment. Yeah. Um, so the black one we saw just a minute ago, this is called the Super Leggera, um, Super Leggera 3, and everything about them is carbon fiber. That is basically fundamentally a MotoGP bike on the road. Re and Serial number 80 of 500. All, um, this, all this aero. Yeah. It's crackers. Yeah. Well, do you remember, I don't know if you will, but a few years ago, Ducati went mad with aero, um, and, and every other manufacturer has been copying them in MotoGP. But there was a time in MotoGP where all of these wings were stuck on and they decided that they wanted to change the rules technically so that these things couldn't be stuck on because they kept getting caught in other bikes. You know, when, when bikes are lent over and that kind of digs into somebody's brake lever, that could be obviously really dangerous. So now yeah. they have to be a feature of the actual bodywork. But um, yeah, in, in sort of 16, 17, 18, they went berserk with aero. And this, the downforce that this produces helps to keep, yeah, that'll be like 150 or 160 kilos, but it'll also be 230 horsepower. So power to weight wise. Oh my wise, gosh, power to weight ratio is bonkers. Yeah, an absolute weapon. Superleggera 2. So we're going back in time, actually. It's quite interesting. So Superleggera 1, Superleggera 2, Superleggera 3. There isn't a Superleggera 4 yet, but I'm sure it won't be, uh, won't be far away, and I'm sure it'll be even more radical and even more cooler than that thing. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Never ridden one of them. I, I love these. Um, have, haven't you got one of these? I've got one of these, and I've got one of these. Of course you have. Um, what do you mean, of course I have? <laughs> I actually want one of these. This is, um, so this is basically, you know the, the, the thing with super bikes is, if you think of a Formula One car, yeah. you're not gonna drive it to Tesco's, are you? You no. can't buy a road version of a Formula One car at all. No. Well, the great thing about production racing, like touring cars, is that you know you take a car from the street and you turn it into a racing car. Yeah. So fundamentally, my, my race bike up there started life as this, the 1199R, which is why I want one of these. I have the two super special ones, but right. I want to find the right one of these for me. And then I know that I can see we're going to go in down that line as well. But clearly, the owner loves a bit of Duke. Yeah, but who doesn't? They're just like yeah. they're just beautiful things, aren't they? Yeah. Um, foggy yeah. replica. They made this as a, a celebration of Carl's championships. Um, these, are, these are a pretty special thing. They got a couple of nice bits on them over the top of the, you know, the original V4 that came out. Um, does Carl ride on the road? Yeah, he does actually, yeah. Does he? Yeah. Um, yeah, he does. He rides quite a bit on the road actually. He has a, a few different things that he goes out and plays on and still does a lot of enduro riding and messes about on motocross bikes and 
basically lives the dream, doesn't he? <laughs> so yeah, getting into race bikes. This is a 94 bike, right? And this one stood out to me from the word go, from the first time I ever came here, because you'll notice things like, you see how the magnesium's all kind of perforated? Yeah. Magnesium, if you don't look after it, really deteriorates. Yeah. And early, uh, early super bikes, I mean, look at the wheels. The wheels are magnesium. They had full carbon fiber brakes back in the day. So this one has carbon fiber brakes on it. Um, the wheels look like the worst person in the world has been parking them against every curb in, uh, in London, which I'm not quite sure why that happened. But um, yeah, this is a, a pretty special thing. I'm not, I'm not convinced it's 100% the Carl Fogarty bike, but it's certainly about as close as you're gonna get to um, you know, being able to buy one. Looks like it's lived a little. Yes, it's, it's had a hard life, bless it, um, as most race bikes do. But um, yeah. yeah, it's a pretty special thing, that. Brand new version, pretty much, of, of exactly the same bike. I mean, this one's been raced as well. Still got the same magnesium stuff on it. Um, you know, this was the bike of dreams, you know. When, when these came out in 1995, it oh. was a complete game changer. Yeah. You know, everybody wanted to buy a Ducati 916. They wanted to put the single seat unit on it because it comes as a road bike with something called a biposto, so two seats. So it had a, a set of footrest hangers down the side yeah. and a twin seat for the wife, although it wasn't very comfortable. Um, but everybody wanted the gold wheels, the single seat, just to look like a, you know, a replica of, of, of their race bike hero. Sort this of is still a bike which everybody talks about. They're beautiful. Yeah. Look at that. It's so, aged well, hasn't it? Oh my, well, listen, it's gonna be, it's almost 30 years old. Yeah. Um, and they're still pretty now. It's quite funny when you look at the rev counter, look, it red lines at 10,700, that big old V-twin thumping away underneath you. They were like a big 250cc bike, like the little bike over there. 250s needed to be ridden white line to white line, be really, really precise on them, carry loads and loads of corner speed and just use that grunt to fire them off the corner. Um, and that was what they were traditionally really, really good at, which is why Carl was so fast on one, because he came from 250s and smaller bikes. Right. So he could, he could, you know, use that to, to maximum effect sort of thing. He was well, really, really fast. And talking of great little bike riders, look at this. This is the Devi Me Ducati that Hizzy won the championship on in 1995. Steve Hislop, gosh, yeah. I feel, I feel like honored to be able to say that guy was a friend. He helped me a lot. When I, uh, when I first stepped onto a superbike in 99, he was riding the, the factory Kawasaki in BSB and I was on the, on the Harris privateer bike. And he used to come into my garage just to, just to give me advice. And oh, I saw you on track earlier on and you were doing this and you were doing that. And what I try and do here and what RPM were you carrying through there? Because I'd come through there and I'd be at like nine or 10,000 RPM. And I knew that if I was at that point and I got to that bit of the track and I'd hit 12,000 RPM, I was on a good run out of the corner. And I'd be like, <laughs> just like absolutely. So he was really, really enthusiastic. Ah, he was so, so helpful. Yeah, he was such a cool guy. Um, Obviously, a, a massive fan of, of flying helicopters, and ultimately, that was his, um, you know, that was his, you know, that was his downfall, wasn't it? Was, it? Um, it was. Which is which is tragic, but super cool guy, and 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 helped me a lot. So, yeah, to see his bike here is is really really nice. Makes me smile thinking about him. Do you know, he's the only guy. He took um, he took a super bike around Donington Park faster than Valentino Rossi took the the, the factory Honda MotoGP bike. One lap in qualifying he did, but it's faster than a MotoGP lap time on a superbike. Bloody hell. Absolutely unheard of, never done since, probably never will be. But uh, yeah, he's a proper, proper legend. It's not a Yamaha. It's not a Yamaha, no. Ironically enough, I actually went for a job interview to try to get that ride. That was Sean Emick's bike in 2001, I believe. And I went up to see Ben Atkins, who at the time owned the, the Red Bull Ducati team. And you know, I'd had a I'd had a decent ish year and, and was kind of up and coming. And he was gonna take a punt on me and give me the ride, but in the end he chose he chose Sean unfortunately. But fortunately for me, I won the, the privateer superbike championship and, and probably beat that bike on my on my privateer bike once or twice. But um yeah, that was that was the, the bike of dreams back in the day. Like yeah. if I could have got on that in two thousand and one, whoa, that would have been that would have been pretty cool. I remember, so I wore a shirt and tie to the interview. Did you really? Yeah. I went to Burton's. That's how, uh, do you remember the shop Yeah, Burton's? yeah, you took it, take it seriously. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. mate, proper serious. Like yeah. Shoes, shirt, tie and everything. Um, rocked up at Revo Red Bull Racing. Sat there like I was uh, you know, ready to do a job interview and telling them how badly I wanted it. And to see that here looking quite so shiny and pristine is, uh, is pretty nice, to be fair. 
Um, talking to Sean Emmett, that's his bike from um, 2004. So when I won the championship, went off to MotoGP, the 999 came out. So the 998, it was the final year of yeah. that, that type of bike, the 916. Yeah. 999 came out. Um, unaffectionately. The monster mob. Uh, monster mob Ducati, livery, yeah. yeah. They, they dubbed it the, the Ugly Duckling because Ducatis were always so pretty. Like the yeah. 916s, all, they're all really pretty bikes. But when these came out, they weren't quite so popular as, as the 916. But um, Sean rode that in BSB. And ironically enough, John McGuinness rode it at the um, Isle of Man TT as well. And the Northwest 200, I think. So uh, I know he maybe rode that at the Northwest 200. And Macau, maybe. He yeah. rode my bike at the TT in 2003. But yeah, John's rode that as well. So John McGuinness and Sean Amit have both raced that. That's, but, a, serious, um, that's a special bike. That's yeah, a, that's, had some, that's had some doers on it. 1098R. Do you remember I rode that from Craig's collection? Yeah. So the 1098R was like a bit of a bucket list bike for me because yeah. obviously my 2008 championship bike was derived from this. Um, so you can see, you know, they build these, these road going specials. We turn them into race bikes and then away we go. So... In 2008, I won a championship with that. That's why I was so keen to ride Craig's one. Man. Um, but they are not playing on the road. Do you remember my review? It's like, this thing's trying to be tickled around at like 60 or 70 miles an hour. It's just That's not interested at all. That's quite a special little bike. This is called a 748 RS, right? And it was built purely for racing in super sport. So back in the day, I think Paolo Casoli and, and a few guys used these in, uh, in the World Super Sport Championship. And that was back when, when World Supersport was like a, you know, they would, they were called them the axe murderers um, because there was basically like 30 guys that were all just trying to kill each other every single race. Um, <laughs> so you had Yamaha R6s, Suzuki GSX R600s, you know, the, the Ducati 748. And that is, a, that is a purpose built rate bike, race bike. So it didn't come as a road bike. Yeah. It came like that, ready to go. Um, it looks featherweight. It looks yeah. absolutely featherweight. Handle absolutely unbelievably but just didn't have a load of horsepower. So that made them even more impeccable. So, you know, essentially the chassis and every, all the components would be really, really similar to the Superbike brother or sister, yeah. um, but much, much less horsepower. So just really, really nice and smooth to ride. A step back in time now, these were the original Ducati Superbikes. Um, this was once a race bike, but by all accounts, the guy that raced it took all of the bodywork off, wrapped it all up in, body, in uh, bubble wrap stuff, yeah. put it in the cupboard, Went and done his racing, um, rebuilt. I mean, look at the look at the headstock. You can see that the thing's been used. Yeah. Um, but then put all the original bodywork back on it, all the original wheels, all the original parts, and made a beautiful bike of it. So. So the eight five one. Eight five one was where it all started. Eight five one started with an SP. Uh, well, it wasn't even an SP. It was just called the eight five one, um, and then it went from that to the one you're standing in front of, which is the SP two. Um, yeah, SP two. See, I know it. I know you do, don't you? I'm not, I never questioned it. Right, bearing in mind that's the two. What's that one then? <laughs> <laughs> SP3. Right, yeah, your zero, eyes work. Zero, number 008. Yeah, a really, really early version. Those yeah. two are SP4s. Um, and there's something yeah. about SP4s that if you have a certain number headstock, um, like below 100 or something, it was like a, an early one. And, and I know this sounds really obvious, but there was something to do with the two headstocks or something. The, no, the lower numbers had a different spec to the higher numbers or something. Right. And then that was finished off with the SP5, which is obviously in the corner over here. And I had a little sneaky look at the speedo on this one a minute ago. It's done eight, no, 10 miles. From, I was going to say eight miles, 10, 10 miles, miles from you. And is that and one an eight? That's an 888 as this well. This is an 888 yeah. SP5. This was yeah. this was the last hurrah before they went to the 916, which came out in 1994, was it? Maybe? That's a big jump, right, yeah. from that to ah, the... You know what? That's why I said when we were talking about it earlier on, the 916 was just a game changer. Mm. Like the RC30, they're two bikes that are both beautiful. You look at them, they're beautiful now. Yeah. Like how did they get so lost in bike design nowadays that, that some of the things just look like rockets with bits of cardboard hanging off them? Do you know what I mean? It's like, there was some, there's some proper beautiful bikes back in the day. Yeah. Talking of beautiful ones, actually, there's a race bike here. So the interesting thing about this, you remember when I said about World Superbike and needing to be competitive and how Davide Tardozzi won the first ever World Superbike race? Yeah. Well, this one came from America, right? And it was owned by a doctor over in the States who just kept it in a collection. But he had a guy called Elrado Ferracci who was like 
the Ducati God in, in America. He ran their superbike teams for years and years and years. This doctor had the guy go over it, right? And, and the funny thing about it is you'll notice there, there's some medical tape on the back of it because the actual barcode originally from Ducati is still on it and he stuck some medical tape <laughs> over the top of it so it never wore off or went away. Oh, yeah. But the reason we know that, that Ferracci went over the thing was because I've never seen this before, right? Never seen it before and I wouldn't even have thought it could work. But if you look down here... It's got one carbon fiber disc and one steel disc for, for brakes. How bizarre. Because in the early days, you could run um, carbon fiber discs in World Superbike, but later years, they changed to steels only. I've never seen a bike with- With a 50-50. With 50-50. No. <laughs> never knew it was possible, and apparently only Alrado Ferracci did it. Yeah, quite a cool, quite a cool thing, that. I want to do another lap in a bit more detail. Well, I don't know how much more detail I've got for you because I'm, I feel fully kind of nerded out, but um, yeah, we'll do another lap. Actually, no, before we do that lap, come and have a look in here. I've got something else to show you. Oh gosh. How about this for a pretty cool collection of Hondas? So I thought this was like gonna be the receptionist's room. I was hoping it was gonna be the toilet, but I knew it wasn't, I'm busting for a week. But <laughs> I thought I'd bring you in here and show you. These are all obviously X-World Superbikes, apart from the, from the Honda over there, the RC213V. That was a MotoGP bike that was basically turned into a road bike. And you can actually buy a 15,000 pounds race kit because as standard, they're not that powerful. It's nowhere near a MotoGP bike, but you can buy a race kit that makes them you know, pretty close to a, a MotoGP bike. But Gosh, right, okay. This one, Doug Poland's factory Honda, 1994 RC45. You remember I rode Craig's bike? Yes. Um, so this is, this is the, the factory race bike from, from them. Um, it's the works version of that bike. The factory version, wow. yeah. So that's a that's a pretty special thing. It does look mega. Yeah, they yeah, were they were livery. incredibly um, you know technically advanced as well. Um, you know the horsepower they had was was pretty strong. But Ducati were dominating back in the day on the on the V twins. So Honda figured if you can't beat them, join them, and built themselves a, an SP one. And we mentioned that earlier on. Colin right. Edwards went on to win the. I think the 2000 or 2001 One. World Championship on it. That's quite a famous bike, actually. That's Nicky's 2016 bike, Nicky Hayden. Obviously, we sadly lost him um, to a cycling accident, but that bike oh, yeah. won. Um, that bike won race two, I think it was, in Malaysia in 2016 in the wet. That was his only World Superbike victory. Um, Gosh, the provenance on this bike is pretty special. Yeah, and it is the bike. Is it's, it? It's not a pretend one dressed up and, and made it. to look special. Yeah, it is the bike. Um, that's a Nikki bike, a 2017 bike. Um, there's no electronics on that one, which is, I don't know why. Um, everything else about it's a full world super bike, but there's no electronics. And then obviously right in front there, you've got Jake Gagne and, and Leon Camier's two, two fire blades. Um, they're both from 2019. Um, they were, they were ready to go for the 2019 season. The irony of it is Leon Camier, the number two bike there is now the Honda world superbike race boss you know he is he answers to one japanese guy and the president of, of hrc really so, so leon's really yeah leon was my teammate in 2008 and he's a great guy we got him really well i saw him actually back in Jul maybe in august um i went along to the world superbike test in montmelo and he was there in his little hrc truck in his laptop out and and beavering away and and doing what leon does or doing what team managers do and yeah, he's doing a great job for him, but the job I think he done when he rode that bike, you know, he's such a professional guy and, you know, such a, such a good athlete as well, you know, he put everything into it and uh, ultimately now he's the, the boss of the team. So uh, quite a cool little story, really. I might phone him up and see if I can sell that back to him. Yeah, you should do. <laughs> this is more interesting than a toilet. Or yeah, but toilet. I still need the toilet, so yeah. come on, let's move along and then we'll do lap two. So we've come back to the first bike that I walked past when I came in this unbelievable room, office full of bikes. This is obviously really personal to you. Does it feel a bit odd coming back and seeing it? I remember coming here for the first time and, and seeing all of the bikes and, you know, my kit and helmets and bits and pieces and just be like, oh my God, <laughs> that's, that's all mine. <laughs> yeah. Why is that in this room? Yeah. Um, this bike obviously i did back-to-back -back championship victories so one of my one of my other sponsors who became a friend has my 16 bike but i'd never seen my 17 bike and i didn't know where it had gone 
so to come here and, and see it, and it is the, the proper thing as well. It's not it's not another made up bit. So this is this is my bike that this I won the championship it. on. Um, was, was quite nice. I mean, the bike you're leaning over right now was my teammate's bike, Glenn Irwin. Um, and that, that actual bike there won both of the Northwest 200 row races when, when he was over there. I mean, Glenn's phenomenally fast around there. And, and yeah, that, that's won some races. The one behind you, um, that was my 18 bike to start off with. Um, and then Andrew Owen won it. But the, the stickers that are on that one now and the bodywork that's on that are because John McGuinness done the, the Macau Grand Prix on it. So yeah, that's, that's why that, so that started life as my bike and then turned into a Macau bike. And then obviously the, the last one is the, is the first of the, you know, the new versions of the bike. That's the, the first of the V4. So that's the 2019 bike. And um, Josh won the, the British Superbike Championship for, for Birdie on, on that bike. So the irony of that bike is that when I did my two year deal to, to ride for PBM with this bike here, yeah. well, actually that one there, to be fair, um, the, the second year of that deal was supposed to be the bike that you're holding there. Really? So I was really looking forward to, you know, trying to defend a title with, with the, the V twin and then getting onto the V four and spending sort of two or three years getting up to speed on that. But, um, as it stood, it came out and was just, you know, night and day above everything. I think they won something like the Ducatis in BSB won 22 of the 26 races or 23 of the 26 races. Um, wow. yeah, in 19, that was phenomenal. If you had the chance to, to own that, would you? Yeah. Or, or this? Yeah. That one, especially. That um, one. Yeah. I mean, that, that for me is, is, yeah, that's synonymous. Is that with your me, Zenith? That's your Zenith yeah. almost. I, I loved it. I got quite upset actually the first time I come in because, you know, I had a, a fantastic career and, and obviously it kind of ended with that bike there. Um, you know, I still harbor a dream that, that, that one day I'll be able to get back on one, but yeah, if it, if it all ended today, then this, this is about the pinnacle. I defended a British Superbike Championship. It's hard enough to win one, but to defend one is even harder. And uh, yeah, we turned it around with a, a sort of 30 odd point deficit at the last round of the championship and came out champions, um, you know, rode that across the line and was pretty damn happy with myself. Went on holiday the day after, <laughs> so Did you? pretty much, yeah. Deserved. Um, the interesting thing is this, this V-twin, the Panigale V-twin, had never won a BSB race before, before I rode it. And in fact, it, I don't think it even had a podium in BSB. And we took it to something like 10 or 12 wins in the first year and a championship and then defended the championship the next year on it. So I felt quite, it. quite proud of that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. I can tell. I can tell you sort of like it's, like, it's like meeting an old family friend or something. Or I, don't, I don't want to turn this into the Shane Byrne show. <laughs> I've, I've quite enjoyed seeing all of these bikes we've been here to look at. But, there's, a shrine, uh, there's a shrine here. There's um, a shrine here. Yeah. You sure this is not yours, this, this broom? <laughs> You've got a friend. Me. You can't got, tell people got, I own all this. I've got a well-connected friend. Have, a, have an educated guess, right? I've just shared with you guys, right? And, and we're here because the owner of all of them is a, is, a, is a close friend of mine. But I've just shared with you guys a collection of bikes that nobody outside of his close circle of friends has seen. Um, we've got this, this, you know, this invitation because I asked very, very nicely. Mm. Um, how much do you reckon? for everything that's in here. Value. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. got to be it's got to be a couple of million quid. It's got to be. Yeah, it is more than a couple of million is quid. Is it more than a couple um, of million quid? Bloody hell. It's a very 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 special collection. Yeah. That I hope you guys have enjoyed looking around as much as I've enjoyed showing Johnny today. Yeah. It's not my first time here, so uh I'm not going to say the novelty's worn off because that would be lying, but um yeah, it's, it's incredible to come and see so many beautiful bikes, so nicely turned out, and uh, I've had a great day, but I've got a six yeah. hour drive now. I, I've got to say, thank you for this, but also you said at the, the start of this, you don't think there's a better bike collection in Great Britain, or if there is, you want to hear about it. Well, come on then, yeah. If you've got a better bike collection than this, get in contact, contact Johnny, contact the show, Contact us full stop yeah. and uh, we'll quite happily come and have a little look around and showcase what you've got. But um, yeah, I think it's been a great day. I think it's a great collection. and It's very special. The smell in here is quite something. <laughs> yeah. So you join us here then on the starting grid 
of the 19, was it 1989, 1990 World Superbike debut race at Donington Park. I'm Shaky Tardotsi. He is Johnny Flopsy. Johnny, we're on two Ducati Superbikes. Yeah. First ever Superbikes. Yeah. I've got a question for you. Of all these bikes in here, of which there are many, yeah. you've got to wheel one out of this thing today. This office, Magnolia office, as you put it earlier on. <laughs> and take which, it home. Which bike's going home? It's a really difficult one. Well, while you have a think about it, viewers, why don't you let us know? Why don't you leave some comments and tell us what your favourite bike's been so far today that you've seen? Or, if you do have a better collection, or you think you have a better collection than this, let us know that too. But, come on, you must have thought about it by now. It's either the Hislop orange duke there, yeah, or in the not-toilet, not-reception room, the Honda... 213. The 213 is such an awesome bike. Yeah. There's there's hardly any of them about and uh, yeah, a proper weapon. I mean, it probably doesn't take a genius to work out after I was just gushing so lyrically about it, what my favorite bike would be. Obviously it'd be my championship winning bike, but um, this has been episode six of The Burnout on The Late Break Show. I've been Shane Shaky Burn. He's been Johnny Smith. We've had a great time looking at these bikes. We've been proudly supported by ABC Brakes and look forward to seeing you in the next episode.